Hello, and welcome to Blue Lightning Healing Meditations. My name is Susie Parker Goins. I'm a channel, an energy healer, a guide. My links are in the description box for my website, um, various podcasts on different platforms, financial support opportunities, and contact information. So please like, comment, subscribe, favorite, share with your friends, donate, you know, do all the things and share the love. The best way to get a hold of me, though, is through my email, and that is Susie P. Goins, S U S Y P G O I N S, at gmail.com, all one word. So thanks for your support. Welcome to week nine of my seven week series on the chakras. So yeah, this is a bonus, bonus episode. I've, I've learned so much that I just got to share with everybody. So here we go. So we know by now that chakras are energy vortices all throughout the body. Everybody has them, even animals. Um, did you, did you know that there were chakra points outside of the body? Well, I want to talk about one of those today. Last week, we talked about the foot chakras, and they are an important point of connection with the earth. Um, they're about groundedness and stability. Well, just below those chakras in your feet is called, it's called the earth star chakra. And depending on who you're talking to or following, it is 8 to 36 inches beneath your feet into the earth. Now the earth star is part of the root chakra setup. It's also called the, it's also called the super root. The whole chakra system has got quite a foundation with the earth. Um, so the earth star foot and root chakra, they team up to balance and ground and stabilize you. And it plays a really important part in your connection to humanity. Now see, I see it as because we all live on planet earth, that's our most common denominator, and therefore that's how we're all connected. It follows that the Earth Star is, imp is that important joining point for us. The Earth Star is an avenue through which you send and receive energy. Energy that goes out of your body and then goes into Mother Earth. Um, and then she breaks it down like compost, you know, how, how you send yard waste into a, into a compost pile and then you cut get it back and it's nutritious it's it's got nutrient rich soil in it well that's what mother earth does with your energy you send the negative energy out there she transmutes it clarifies it balances and stabilizes it and then you can receive it back through the earth star up through your feet and up to the root the earth star also holds your soul's history the ancestry. Um, it carries past life memories and lessons that you had in healing. It's also got information and energy surrounding the family and DNA programming. And I, I do remember seeing references talk about how the earth holds memories. Talk about roots. It helps me to make more sense about what the earth star chakra is all about. Okay, so energy is anchored in the earth star. Because it's embedded in Mother Earth, it provides us with all we require to survive. Uh, no, what we require to thrive on the planet. A healthy Earth star promotes more efficient manifestation. Because you're grounded and then you can make your, your dreams, your wishes happen sooner. So its color ranges from brown to black to aqua, the color of water. I've also read that it's even magenta if you look at it in an aura scan. So a healthy earth chakra looks like, um, looks like one is able to remain grounded during times of, of chaos or hectic life. It, I, I'm not going to preach about taking a break from electronics or media for now because, you know, it's, it's chaos, but it wouldn't hurt. Your body's energy, your energy body, sorry, your energy body is connected to the earth. And that connection is especially important to light workers, empaths, healers. I mean, we have a tendency to take on energy as we process it. And so to be able to release it into Mother Earth, to have her cleanse it and, and transmute it and then send it back up to us is, as Clarified energy is important for us to survive as light workers. Uh, you're also 
aligned with the Earth's magnetic core. And not only can you discharge the negative energy into the Earth, a healthy Earth star can draw it up to help you and support your grounding. Other signs of a balanced Earth star are um, there's a connection to inner peace, uh, a peace of mind. You have an ability to see the bigger picture or what the larger cause is, the greater cause is. Feelings of security, a sense of protection, you know, that you trust and, and have a deep connection with Mother Earth or Gaia. And also physical health, and you can be comfortable in your own skin. Imbalances show up as a constant unknown fear or anxiety or insecurity ungroundedness, you know, spacey, out of balance in life, you know, how you feel off kilter sometimes, physically, and of course, I'm no, still not a doctor, but physically, you can experience lower body issues, you know, wobbly legs, foot issues, and also dizziness. Uh, there's an inability to manifest or to make things happen. You have an overactive mind who <laughs> <laughs> and then there's that disconnection with people in the material life. Now, there are a lot of ways to balance or to activate your Earth Star. And the first one's going to be through meditation. And I'm going to be uploading one on Monday that Gaia, or Mother Earth, has been helping me to write. And knowing her, she's going to step in and lead it for us. I'm so excited about that. Um, to balance and activate the Earth Star is another good reason to practice earthing, getting out into nature. If you can go out barefoot and connect with connect with the Earth, you know, using your intention to connect, that's great. Walk out in nature, hug a tree, do the things. Do the outside things. You can also practice mindfulness and consideration for Mother Earth when you're making your day-to-day -day decisions. So like recycling or reducing the chemicals that you use, say, in your home, uh, reducing your carbon footprint. You can also listen to 68.05 hertz frequencies. That's the Earth Star frequency, and then there's going to be a lot of those. Just look up Earth Star frequency on YouTube, and I'm sure you'll find a whole bunch of meditations. Uh, or, yeah. Um, you can use positive affirmations such as, I am grounded and stable. I release old beliefs and negative patterns into Mother Earth. I am safe. I am grounded. I am loved and completely supported by Mother Earth. And I allow Mother Earth's energies to run through my chakras. So I looked on the website Zend Out. And it reminds us, they remind us to not single out any one chakra when you're working on them, but to include all of them. Now, I understand that when you're working on balancing chakras and opening them, you will, you will focus on one, but don't do it to the exclusion of all others. What's going to happen is as you work on all your chakras, you're going to awaken the kundalini and... That'll be, you know, you got to give me two weeks before I can put that podcast together. Um, being an earthly chakra, uh, eating organic root vegetables or tubers will help to activate and balance it. So, you know, we're talking like potatoes, uh, rutabagas, radishes, sweet potatoes, parsnips, that sort of thing, beets, you know, on like that, carrots. Um, organic is ideal because it is that farming practice that's in alignment with the earth rhythms and it also uses less chemicals. I know it's more expensive, but then there's more human work in there to, um, to do the job of chemicals and it's just safer for all of us. Next up are essential oils. The grounding and calming ones are the ones we're gonna look at. The ones that you, um, that you would have used, uh, that you can use on your root chakra. So using a carrier oil, you mix that up and then you rub it on the bottom of your feet. You can use it during meditation. You can diffuse it. Don't ingest it. No, don't do that. So we're looking at vetiver, which is a calming and grounding oil. Uh, it, has a, it has that sort of effect on your emotions. It makes it perfect for Earth Star chakra support and, rest, and even restful sleep. 
Patchouli has very grounding effects. It's wonderful for balancing emotions and calming issues from the past. It still smells like patchouli on me, but you know, hey. Next up is myrrh, and that calms your nerves and it fosters tranquility. Then cedar wood, it has an ability to calm strong emotions and eases stress and anxious thoughts. And finally, there's sandalwood, and it's known for balancing and grounding properties. Yeah, single source sandalwood is quite expensive. You will find that a blend of sandalwood sources is more cost effective, but it's up to you. And next up are stones. Grounding stones are what we're looking at. So we're talking about black, brown, or any of these, and these are just a few you can choose from. And as it is, it's a lot. I like my stones. So first off, we're going to start with fire agate. It's stabilizing and strengthening. It helps us to remember our soul purpose and stimulates a, a joie de vivre, you know, that, that joy in living. Moss agate balances emotional, physical, and intellectual energies. It also harmonizes the yin-yang energy. So we're talking feminine and masculine, receiving and projecting, you know, the in, the out, the yin-yang. Those, it balances those. Hematite, it focuses on the heart and the mind, and it helps you to understand what is real and attainable. Such a grounding stone. Next up is black kyanite. Um, that creates bridges to allow you to connect and transmit image, allows you to connect and transmit energies. Uh, it brings you into alignment with a tranquil and calming effect. It also doesn't accumulate negative energies. It actually cleanses them, so they come to you positive or clear. Moldavite, it's a result of a of an impact on Earth. So it's not the it's not the meteorite so much as it is the the action of the meteorite hitting the Earth. And this is molten glass that comes out. So it's a fusion of space material and earth material to create this stone that can ground you and yet send you out into the cosmos. I found out it, that it's a useful stone for those of you who are star seeds. Um, it reminds you of your place of origin and also that you have a home here on earth. I thought that was very cool. Black obsidian. Black obsidian is a shamanic stone. Uh, shamanism is a practice. It's a whole cultural thing in which you can go deeper, deeper than you ever have before to reclaim your soul, to heal all these past ancestral wounds. And obsidian, it can be polished to a mirror-like sheen. And then that way you can look into it and go and travel way deeper into your psyche than, than before. And look deeply into your heart. Onyx integrates the duality of self so it connects the body and your past that allows you to put down roots to look deeply at your family's dna and karma it's a centering and aligning stone pyrite is a protective stone it defends against negative energies and emotional attacks and it helps you to see beyond the facade uh, smoky quartz it has an ability to protect and ground to protect and ground you physically and spiritually. It absorbs and transmutes negative energy and then releases it into Mother Earth to be neutralized. Tourmaline, uh, the black one specifically, I mean, it goes like pink and green, but black tourmaline specifically is a stone of protection and grounding. Uh, it's a psychic shield that deflects and def uh, deflects and dispels negative energies. It's highly useful in purifying and neutralizing one's own negative thoughts and turning them into positive and useful energy. You know, I, and that's what I have now on the Earth Star. And you know, as, as hard as I have tried to wind up this series, like I said at the beginning, I have learned so much that I just got to keep putting it out there. So next week is going to be about the Soul Star. Actually, Monday is my meditation. And then next Thursday is going to be about the Soul Star. And then that, the Thursday after that, we're going to talk about the Kundalini. It's, it's all really fascinating. And I like it that it's all connected. So I want to end this up with a quote from Cinnamon Crow. And I quote, 
the potential for this chakra, meaning the earth star, the potential for this chakra is staggering. It's through the earth star that karmic issues are released and forgiven, allowing the soul to transcend the karma cycle. Once karmic issues are overcome, all future reincarnations are by choice with full memory of the soul's purpose. Pretty cool. So until next time, blessings.